we'll roll here and uh, and we'll get rolling indeed. So um, I want to uh, we're just going to go right to some text today. Do a little bit of review on where we've been. Get get my right layout here. So where we've been is we talked last week about this concept in the Gospel of Matthew of binding and loosing, and does the church get that power or not? And and how is it that Lutherans have looked at that concept and that we've talked about Scripture being the final authority, so Scripture has to interpret Scripture, but but we can't get around that it needs interpreting. interpreting. Um, and so, so yeah, so we, we've had plenty of conversation on that. We won't go back to that. I want to lift up, as we're coming down the stretch here this week and just a little bit next week, um, talking about the Gospel of Matthew, that ultimately Matthew is a teaching Gospel. Teaching this class, I've read through the whole Gospel and then gone back and forth a lot, and I'm just struck by clearly the Gospel of Matthew is written as a kind of instruction manual, as a catechism for the church. And clearly, but when Matthew writes, people have perhaps started to not be worried too much, it seems, about what Jesus taught, about how to live and how to be in this world, uh, what, it is to, what it looks like to be a disciple. Maybe, as I suggested at the beginning of this class, uh, maybe um, people hearing how Paul preached the gospel, the significance of the Christ event, may, maybe people had fallen into kind of an antinomianism, a, a kind of we can do whatever we want, um, we, you know, ethics aren't that important, we're saved by grace, so we can do whatever we want. Maybe people had fallen into that, and this Matthew, the writer of Matthew, is a kind of critique of that. I think that's certainly possible, uh, but, but without a doubt, Matthew is concerned with the teaching of, of Jesus. And so, with that, I want to go to um, Matthew... Oh, Um, Matthew 11, 25. And I want us to spend some time with this text because it's so uh, crucial, I think. It's kind of right in the middle of the Gospel of Matthew and it's so crucial to what this Gospel is all about. So I want to read this text and then um, I'm going to have you work on some questions and we're going to try and see if we can really unpack this. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants or babes. Let me make this bigger. Why is this small? Can you read that now? Okay. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. And no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. And then these famous words, Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. So we've got a passage, a prayer of Jesus. And in the Gospel of Matthew, it's a little bit different than the high priestly prayer in the Gospel of John, where we have this whole chapter of Jesus praying to God. We've got this concise little prayer where Jesus turns to his Father and prays, I'm thankful that you've revealed what you're revealing to me and that I'm revealing to them, um, to infants. Not to the greats of the world, not to the Herods of the world, but to the babes. Let's in fact look at this word just for some fun here. Um, <coughs> Infant. 
infant, child, minors, child is gentle, it can mean. Um, so, so it's got a few different ways it's translated, but th there's a couple of different words for child. Um, but So, infants is the way it's translated most often, sometimes children. So, that's a, just an interesting concept in and of itself. Yes, Father, your gracious will. So, getting back to will, what is this about? It's about God's will being done. And so all things have been handed over to be by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and the one who knows the Father except the Son, and anyone whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. Remember how we talked about a big theme in Matthew is, where is God, the presence of God? Well, where is God? God's in Jesus. And where do we find it? And then Jesus reveals God to us. So, so, so um, what we're experiencing is the presence of God through Christ in this gospel. But in particular, what I want you to work on is what, when you hear now this passionate to come to me, all who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. What, so we're going to do two things in your small groups. First, we're going to talk about what are the burdens that people experience today. Uh, so, but, but let's see if we can just, you guys turn on your mics so maybe it'll pick up a little bit. But um, let's just do a talk, toss out. What are things people are carrying? Let me hear it. I'm sorry, financial burdens. Health concerns. Did you say finance? Finances, health concern, loneliness. Yes. Evil. Family. Family, back here. Government. Government. Yes. Personal relationships. Personal relationships. Helplessness. Getting those going. A sense of helplessness. Or violence in the world. Depression. Patty. I said violence. In the violence. Weighs us down. Guilt. Guilt. Okay. Absolutely. Children and parents. Ch children. Parenting. Big, big, big part of it. What else? What have we missed from your? Just in general. The world's condition in general, okay? The future. Yep. What's going to happen in the future? Okay, yeah, Terry. Trying to translate the tangibles that we have into the un intangible, all of our stuff. Okay. Do you want mine? Trying to translate the tangible into the intangible, okay? Good. Yes. Um, managing expectations, the expectations we put on ourselves, but also uh, that come from society. Expectations. Our own? The expectations of others? That is definitely something that weighs. Did I see another one over here? Okay, yeah. Expectations equal disappointment. And they can equal disappointment, right? We don't meet them or other people don't meet ours. Yeah, good. What are other things that people are weighed down by today and that we may have missed. Yeah. Not being adequate. Not being adequate enough. Not having the resources either. Whatever that might be. The, the, the strength. Yeah. Concern that you've made the right decisions. Decision making. Huge burden. Huge burden. What should I do? This. Should I keep going with my job? Should I not? Should I, you know, retire or not? Or I don't know. Or change jobs, you know, absolutely the big burden. Boy, there's a lot out there that you guys are carrying. A lot of stuff. <laughs> you guys are. It's 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 a R-rated movie, so I don't know if I can talk about it. But any of you seen Bull Durham, the movie? Oh, yeah. you know, I just love that spot where you know the, the pictures, Newt's out there. He's not having a good day because his father came, and he's and then the first baseman's girlfriend put a curse on his glove, and he can't catch. So they're all debating all of this at the thing, and the catcher comes out, and it's and then the manager comes out. What's going on out here? And, you know, I won't use the words he used, but anyway, we're dealing with some major stuff out here, you know, because they're trying to solve the world's problems by the pitcher's mouth. Anyway, su stupid analogy just popped in my head. Um, so you guys are carrying, you guys are dealing with some major league stuff. <clears throat> and so am I. There's a lot to get weighted down. I've often said that modernity is not harder 
than life 100 years ago. Because when I think of the pioneers in our country, there, no way is my life as hard as theirs. But it's way more complicated. Would we agree maybe with that? Yes. Lots more stresses. Lots more stresses in many respects. Yeah. So we can get weighed down with a lot of stuff. Well, first century people were weighed down, obviously, with lots of stuff. Jesus, as he's doing his ministry, looks out and says, Come to me, all you who are carrying heavy burdens. I think if, there's, if the gospel is preached, if Jesus preaches the gospel in Matthew, this is sounding pretty gospel at this point. Come to me. Now, what is the good news? What is Jesus going to do? How is he going to help us? Take, take my yoke upon you. Kind of what Jesus has revealed to us, lowly infants. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Now, what I want you to do on your table, don't worry about being right or wrong. If someone said to you, I have no idea what Jesus is talking about, what do you think he's talking about? How is this good news? Okay? Everybody know what a yoke is? <laughs> That's true. I mean, a yoke is only used for, for multiple animals. Right? Uh-huh. So it's used to share the strain between two oxen or two horses or multiple uh, yeah. you know, pulling the whatever right. Good. They're, they're, Good. so that we got to understand what a yoke is that, that's helpful that's helpful um, and uh, if we were to like <laughs> folks in biblical times would be thinking exactly like that we know also that sometimes um, in Proverbs the, the wisdom is a as a yoke, so it's a it, it's used in the Bible metaphorically. Obviously, Jesus is using that here, but historically, that's exactly what it is. And given that we don't <laughs> deal with yokes much around here except for eggs, I think that I don't think that's what he's about. so. Um, so anyway, so now what is Jesus talking about with that helpful information Bob gave? What is Jesus? What do you think he means? If someone said, "How do I do that?" What do I do? I want you to be able to say, I want you to work on that. What would you tell somebody? Well, this is what that means. This is how you do it, okay? Ready, go. What does this mean? How do we how do we take Jesus' yoke upon ourselves or whatever? Yes, please, start us off. Yes, uh, well, in studying this before, somebody smarter than me brought up the fact that the and this feeds off of what Bob Green was mentioning before, you know, the, the purpose of a yoke. It connects the two animals together, and together they can pull way more effectively right. than, the, than the two would individually. Yeah. So they can do like twice as much work as they would if the two individually. Right. Um, this was my understanding. Yeah, good. And so, if, so then, uh, thinking of that, um, if we also realize that Jesus is saying, take on his yoke. If that means then that we put on the yoke and Jesus is the other party in the yoke, <coughs> that the two of us are together. So it's not like we're putting on a sandbag that weighs 40 pounds and then they still have to go do the same work. Oh, we tend to think okay. of a yoke, right. we, we tend to forget that the yoke is two working together. Right. And we just think, oh, that's just another burden i got to put on. Now Jesus says he's going to make it easier. Right. But no, it's sharing the burden. Right. So if Jesus is the other party in yeah. the yoke, then yeah, that kind of that could make sense. Right. Well, he's somebody that can carry a lot of weight. Okay, lots of lot of people keep build on. This. But yoke is also a beam that you would carry across your shoulders with a bucket on each side. So that is your yoke and your load. Okay. And basically, it's saying, take my yoke. Okay. It's not as heavy as yours. All right. So there's. Both, who are you going to do it with? That's powerful. So, so let, let me take both of those and then get the rest of you on. So the first, what I hear, Doug, and what you're saying is, hey, don't do it by yourself. Yeah. That you get into the community, and where's Jesus? He's in the community. So, so he's the one that's going to help you. And here, so you then you take Jesus' load, which then we need to unpack 
Well, what is that? Let's keep going. Yeah, yeah, but we were discussing at the table here was that when you truly give up something to the Lord and you truly give it over to Him and don't worry about it, mm -hmm. that your load becomes lighter also. Uh huh. You truly say, I'm not going to worry about it. You know, I'm truly giving it up to the Lord and here it Good. is. Good. So when taking Jesus' load and yoke, we have to let go of ours. Okay? Good. Excellent. Right here. I am so thankful to Bob who explained the yoke piece. Thank you, because we all know what it is, but I didn't feel, I mean, it didn't hit Think me about, about it. Yeah. The, the, the sharing the load. And so I, it popped into my brain and shared with the table. When I was in Egypt, I was mesmerized watching a camel and a donkey yoked together plowing the field. Mm. Uh, Never seen that. A camel and a donkey, and it really hit me with that explanation. A donkey is big, right. clumsy, right. contrary, camel, spits, camel, 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 camel yeah. what did I say? Donkey. Oh, yeah. Sorry, but they're contrary, they spit, they bite, they kick, they're right. mean and nasty. Right. Right. Nobody can get along with a camel. Right. That's us, guys. Right. <laughs> That's us. And then they yoke them with the donkey, right. who is gentle and sweet and Patient. just puts one foot in front of the other. That sounds good. That sounds good. I like that. So again, get together, be a team. So if someone goes, how do I do this? There's, there's a sense of, well, you want to get yoked up with Christ. He's going to carry your burden. You're with Him, but you don't do it by yourself. You carry His load. Okay, keep going. I'm still not sure what it means to take this load. This has been very helpful. Thank you. It's good. But now, what is it? How do I do that? I know we got one in the back. We were talking back here about our human nature. Um, we want to do it all ourselves. Yes. I do it. Okay. That's what my kids said to me. Yes. I do it. Yes. And Terry pointed out, hey, that's the root of original sin. Ah, that's right. Um, and so it's this, this giving up and being adopted into this. Mm, um, nice. It's really difficult. Right? Yes, yes it is. So that's helpful, just to know that there's going to be resistance to this. And that absolutely is, okay? Mm -hmm. I think of it, of it as taking on his way of teaching, doing, but not so much as a heavy burden. Right. As, as an uplifting way of life. Okay, so you use the word teaching. It does say, learn from me. So if I'm, I don't know, any, I have no idea what Jesus is talking about. Oh, so you're going to say something that I need to know something about what Jesus is teaching. So, so taking on his burden means what? Learning. I got to, what is, what, what is he about? Okay, very good. Yeah. Well, we said that when you're yoked together and we have this burden issue, the burden doesn't go completely away, even though we say, well, I'm going to let God take care of it. Right. Take care, right? You're still going to go through the event with him. So we go back to being yoked. He's walking side by side with us. Yep. We're learning from this experience, good, bad, or indifferent. Yep. And that is what we go through. I don't think the burden gets eliminated. Right. I think we stay with the burden. He helps us through that burden and teaches us as we go along. Yeah. He doesn't say, and you won't have any burdens. It's like the picture you saw of the man walking through the desert. Yes, Jesus is there all the time. Right, right. He's curious, but there is still a burden and there is still a load. Well, you had your hand up. Yeah. 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 Or you want to rethink it? You get? Yeah. Just looking at the words, um, learn from me, for I am gentle and humble. I think Jesus wants us to start out being humble, start mm. from that aspect. Of right, it. right. Because if you're boastful and it's all about me, how can you help others? How can you be useful and helpful? Right. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Good. Over here? Yes. Yeah. Um, I was thinking of what Don had said about the single yoke. Mm -hmm. The one that's on both sides. And I looked at the verse again and I'm saying, oh yeah, all you that are weary and carrying. Yes. You know, that, that, that kind of shows us what we do. Right. That we, you know, we may try to avoid 
the burden. We yes. decided I'm not going to carry that today. But nowhere in it here does it say, after you give up your own yoke, mm. that he says, I will give you rest. But that is not the same as, I'll do it for you now. Mm. So, helpful. There is effort on our part. Absolutely. and But this effort is different from the other load. Excellent. Let's keep it going with that. Yeah. Well, going on with that, so one of the interpretations of these heavy burdens can be the legalism of the uh, that Jesus was teaching against in Matthew, right? Right. It gets and, the scribes and Pharisees put on this weight right. on these people. Yeah. And so what does Jesus require of us in the New Testament? He requires two things, love God and love each other. So that's a much... Yeah more simplistic yoke to, I mean, it's not easy to do, yeah. but it's easier to understand. Right, right, good, excellent, excellent. Oh, this is helpful. I'm starting to figure out, because I want to I want to take this load on, but I, it's just really, I'm not sure how, because I've never heard anything about Christianity before, and so I just really need some help in understanding. So, yeah, yeah. Though, yeah. This is not from our discussion, but yeah. it's just hitting me. Yeah. How is, in the last verse of this, for my yoke is easy. How is Christ's burden easy? Either it's individually sharing His uh, so that we take something lighter on than what we have, releasing ourselves. Um, but how is His burden light? Yeah. That's what I want to know. Okay, good. Uh, to Tom, another right, right here to Mark. And you go, you go on that, Tom, you get up here to Mark. That again. Well, this, this reminds me a little bit of the um, devotional bit this morning in, ah. in the church because he talked about needing to give up, take some time. Well, that's, that's how you take up the oath with Jesus, ah. is take time to get into his word. Thank you. That's really helpful. So, so what you're saying, I need to study scripture and read and learn about Jesus, that that's a part of this. Okay, that's helpful. Good. Please. But And then over here, how is his load easy? Yeah. I, I'm with that. I'm, we're sitting here just trying to wrap my mind around Jesus has all of our burdens and it's just blowing me away that how can this possibly be and just sitting here it's perception of the burdens ah. and Jesus perception even though he's he has the weight of the whole world on him yeah. his perception of it is it's nothing it's little right. it's light and our perception of our burdens are hey they're dragging me under right. they're doing me in so, mm. pure burden, by definition, a burden, there's no doubt. Jesus has far more burdens from our perspective. Right. Perspective. Right. But to see his perception of burden is nothing for him. Our perception is, it's so overwhelming. And then when we let him in, hey, now we get some of his perception. That's the only way I can really wrap it around because... That is good. That is helpful. And I'm going to bounce off of what you're saying by saying that it's how you, well, this is exactly what you said. It's how you perceive now your burdens. Might be that now you get a whole different frame of what's important, what's not important, you know, what you let go of, what's a big deal, what's not a big deal. Um, that's, that's really helpful. Please, Joe. Well, I'm thinking, too, once you're yoked and you're on the way, there's an end to it. Mm, right. And you know where you're going, and yes. you can anticipate that uh, you're going to you're going to be unyoked yes. and allowed to rest. Yes. And Jesus certainly knew where he was going. Right. Right. So there is an end to this. It's a journey. Yeah. Good. Okay. That you've really helped me. This is really good. Anybody else want to help me help me uh, understand what it means to take Jesus's yoke? And his bur how his burden can be light. That sounds exciting because I'm kind of weighed down, and this life is very complicated and crazy. And I just really, I uh, you know, I, I this is interesting. Okay, good, good. What? But you know what? Now that I hear you saying that, if 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 taking his yoke upon me, and I want to do that, and I've heard some of you say that it's that you learn. That you understand, what are some of his teachings? Oh, I heard you say, love God with all your heart, love your neighbor as yourself. Are there other 
are there other things that Jesus is telling me to do? Um, can you unpack that a little bit? Uh, what, are the, what are these teachings that Jesus is talking about? Can you, yeah, I see somebody over there that wants to tell me. <laughs> uh, I've got Psalm 55, 22. Okay. Cast your cares on the Lord and He will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. Mm. We look to His promises. Okay. Trust His promises. Good. Good. I mean, how else would you sum up this teaching of Jesus? Can you unpack that for me just a little bit? Love God. Love your neighbor. Yourself. What are some things that Jesus said? Can you flesh that out for me? Anybody? Anybody think of anything? <laughs> No, that just sums it up, huh? That's it. <laughs> okay, I see. I see somebody back here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm reading a book on forgiveness. So this is maybe topical just to me, but um, Jesus teaches forgiveness. If <clears throat> when we were listing all of our burdens, guilt, you know, all of these things, one of them would be forgiveness. That's one of our burdens that we struggle with. Does Jesus struggle with that? No. That's why maybe his burden, you know, is light. His yoke is easy. Because, and when, um, when he says, you know, um, learn from me, you know, learn from me, do it the way I do it, you know, and so it's really, this book that I'm reading, and obviously the, the journey I'm taking is really understanding how Jesus forgives, so, you know, and how he loves, so I can, I can do it his way, so I can, I can get rid of the burden, I can let go of that, okay. the burden that unforgiveness that you carry with unforgiveness. Right. Okay, wow, that, that really helps me because, you know what? If, if Jesus' load is his, and yoke is his teaching, and his teaching is that I need to forgive and let go, whoa, that is, that is light. That, that's really helpful, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we're told that we then have to let our light shine uh -huh. so that people see our Father in heaven, that, that we, not that we just clutch it to ourselves and say, oh, I'm, I'm taken care of now. Ah. Um, we have to um, be up on on a table and kind of radiate that out. Okay, good. All right. So that's life-giving, please. And then over here. Yeah. Well, I'm coming at it from a little different angle. <clears throat> Uh, we're saying that Christ does carry the heavy load. Yeah. But we have to remember that Christ was in the Garden of Gethsemane. Right. And what did he pray to God? Right. If you would, the Lord, can you take this cup from me? Right. So, it's my book. You're fine. It's my voice. Yeah. I'm describing for you this yeah. morning. Yeah. Me too. So, <laughs> so, I think that Christ has carried the load of the world on his yoke alone. Yeah. He knows what a heavy yoke is. Right. And so now that he's now that he's done it for us, he's saying, I've been there guys. I know what your burdens are. Ooh. And just get on the other side, I've done it for you. And right over here. Go. I think one other thing we learned, uh, that last verse from my yoke is easy, my burden is there. Um, the Jesus burden is lighter, yoke is easier, because we learn from him the relationship he has with the Father. Oh. And that he is yoked with the Father. Oh. And that who knows the Father except the Son and all that. Oh, brings so that we, all need in. To, we need to learn about that relationship, because that's who he is yoked with, in terms of it being easier and lighter. And so therefore, in our getting yoked with Christ, also yoked in that relationship. So, so we learn from that relationship, our relationship, the prayers that he gives, turning things over, all, all of that. That's really helpful. That's really interesting. You know, also, I just had, you guys are really helping me because I just, it's, so Jesus seems to talk about two different kinds of yokes here, or burdens, right? And, and I've heard that Jesus took all of our burdens on the cross, like you were saying. Um, and so then he takes away one yoke, but he gives a different kind of yoke. And this yoke isn't a drag or a burden so much as it is life-giving. It sounds like you're telling me. That's, that's interesting. I uh, am thinking of two different things. <clears throat> one was the, uh, when 
when uh, Peter wanted to get out of the boat and go meet his master. Yes. And the waves were crashing and uh, he probably didn't have a life jacket on him and didn't know how to swim, but uh, he started to do it. Right. And he got out a little ways and then when he saw the how high the waves were and <coughs> he didn't have a life jacket, uh, well, it's come and see. Right. That's, uh, that brings along faith. Okay. Where was his faith? Right. Where's my faith? Okay. Uh, it also said, and we talked about it a couple weeks ago, about mustard seed. Okay. If you have faith as great as this mustard seed, you can move that mountain. Right. Wow. So what you're telling me is that this invitation of Jesus' to come to him, I don't have to have perfect, complete confidence to get out of the boat. Get out there. So how do I do it? Well, you step out in faith. You, you go for it, and you're going to fall. But what happened to Jesus? Or what happened to Peter? Jesus picked him up, didn't he? So, okay, that's really helpful. Maybe that's why you should be in a community when you follow Jesus and take on his yoke, so that you got other people around you to help you and model that. that okay, this is, this is really starting to make sense for me. I see a few more hands, though. Let's see. Yes, please. Well, that kind of helps with what I was just struggling with a little bit. And that, so I can wrap my head around love God and love each other, but the one that I always struggle with is at the end of Matthew, the Great Commission, where you're supposed to put your feet to the road and, you know, and that part. But if I'm part of a community, you're, you, you know, that's your gig, and that's right. great. So I can be supportive in the other ways. You know, yes. that's, our, that's where we're yoked together. Right, right. So you have people with different gifts and abilities and teachings. Okay, good. Did I see one more over here? Yeah, please. And then Randy, yep. Yeah. I'm so excited. I think well, I'm figuring this out. Yeah. When, you, when you look at the, the scripture up there, you know, he says, come, and then he says, take, and then he says, learn, and then he says, it all results in rest. <laughs> uh, wow. Just look at the verbs. That is beautiful. Come. And easy. Carry. Take. That's right. Take. And then carry. And then you get rest. Wow. That sounds like the Christian journey, doesn't it? You know, that not just a once for all, but that's a weekly thing. And it all takes willingness on our part. Sure. Yeah. They're, they're, yeah absolutely. So somebody mentioned... Oh, Randy, please. Uh, the only yeah. thing I was going to add, Pastor, was that we had talked about this earlier when you were saying, what does Jesus require of us? And, and it says, here we go. When I, when I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. And I was in prison, and you came to visit me. And he goes on with, you know, all the actions that we should take to our fellow man to, yes, carry on and also live as Christians. Ah, that's, thank you. So that really unpacks that love God and love your neighbor and yourself thing. So, compassion. Care, concern for people who are suffering and struggling. And that taking that burden on is not crushing, but life-giving. Wow, it seems like Jesus is giving a whole new vision of how to live and walk in this world. And it seems like it has a promise that it's not going to be crushing, but life-giving. Doesn't it say in Joshua, choose this day who you shall serve? If you do these, you're going to choose death. If you choose me, if you choose Yahweh, you're going to choose life. Maybe Jesus is standing before us and calling us to a way that gives life. But boy, when I walk out of here today, where am I going to get that message? If I turn on the TV and watch a commercial, am I going to get that message? I'm just going to get more burdens, right? You better do this. You ought to. You should. Isn't it beautiful that what Jesus is doing is offering us an invitation? The law is always you should, you must, you better, if or else. And 
The gospel is may, invite, and, and, and then promise. And what's the promise? Rest. Isn't this, isn't this cool? So, um, look, at, look at how the gospel ends. Some of you talked about this. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. By the way, this word is math, math, um, Matheteuo, Matthias, Matthias, um, it, the word is um, very similar to Matthew, but the word literally means to learn, to be, to be a, a student of. And right here, if you look at the verb, same verb, Matthias. Or, um, so I'm not saying that exactly right, it doesn't matter. So, um, so go therefore make learners of all nations. How do you do that? You baptize them. You bring them into the fold through baptism. That's the first act. That's the way you come into the community. Baptize them. Bring them in. And then teach them to obey everything that I commanded you. He could have just as well said, and help them to take my yoke upon themselves. This yoke of compassion and love and care and concern that... And that yoke is life giving. Teaching you to obey everything that I commanded you. So you know what I get from you guys today? I get that Jesus is calling me into community. He's calling me into worship. He's calling me into relationship with other folks who are going to study what Jesus had to say. And I'm going to learn and try and figure that out and what that means for me. And if I do that... There's going to be rest, now and forever. And, and life is going to be not necessarily easier, but way better. Hmm? Am, I, am, I get, am I getting what you're saying? I think so. Excellent. Well, great work. Yeah, we've got a couple more. Please, yes. And Wolf. I just want to make a comment that you talked about Jesus. Um, I forgot what you said. That's okay. Um, well, anyway, instead of looking at life as a weight, look at it as the light of God. Yes. And there's talk about bringing forth life. Light brings forth life. Right. Yeah. Beautiful. Perfect way to end today. Perfect way to end. A different, whole different way of framing how we live and how we go about things. And, and think, yeah, could talk a lot more. Okay, so we're going to finish up. I really am interested... And looking in Matthew at um, some, a little bit of the passion and some of the unique things of Jesus' um, death and resurrection, the unique emphases of Matthew. And so we're going to finish up there. We might have some folks doing some talk about devotions next week, but it might be a little bit further on. But So that's where we're going to finish up this week. If you haven't filled out your form, please fill it out. And maybe somebody from each table can bring them up and put them up here for me. That would be awesome. Yes? Yes. Oh, thank you. I, maybe I should be a pastor if I've got it figured out.